Hello all, welcome to Shell Scripting for DevOps in the Nature. My name is Castro Kiran. So far in this lecture series, we have seen the different core concepts that are available in the Shell Scripting. This will be the last video in the lecture series of Shell Scripting for DevOps Engineers. In this video, we are going to see the most commonly used scripts by the DevOps Engineers in the real time scenarios. So we are going to see a total of 25 different scripts which are going to be helpful for you when you are going to join as a DevOps engineer or if you are already a DevOps engineer, I guess you will be working with one or more of these scripts on daily basis when you are working in the real time environment. So let us understand the different scripts that we are going to use as a DevOps engineer. Before proceeding with understanding the scripts, I would like to let you know that in this video, I am not going to execute any of the scripts, but I'll be explaining you some of the scripts which are complicated to understand. And I want you to execute the scripts by making appropriate changes so that you will be understanding how the scripts are working, whether they are working in a right way or in a wrong way. So this is what I would like to tell you to execute the scripts on your own, because whatever the last five videos that we have discussed, I have showed practically how to write a shell script and how to execute them. What are the outputs that we are going to get and how to analyze that output? This is what we have seen. So in this video, it is only about explaining the scripts, but mostly about doing the work on your own with the scripts, which I am going to give. This entire document will be available in the GitHub repository and the link to the GitHub repository is provided in the description of this video. So I would like to check you that particular repository for the all lecture notes, especially the lecture six notes as well. So the first script is about how to check the health of the system. So if you want to perform the health checks of a system, let's say here system means the EC2 instance. So that is what this script is all about. So here what it will do is this script is going to monitor the CPU utilization, memory utilization and the available disk space or how much disk has been utilized. And it is going to send the alerts if thresholds are exceeded. Suppose let's say if CPU utilization is greater than 80%, I want to get the result or I want to get an alert. If memory utilization of an instance is greater than 80% or is equals to 80%, then I should get an alert. If disk utilization is equals to 90%, I should get an alert. So that is what I have defined it here. So firstly, I have defined what are the maximum values so that system will understand and system will read the values. And then it is going to print a checking system health check. And then it is going to perform some operation where it is going to give us the output details of how much utilization has been done. So that is what here it will be showing it. So you can see it here, it is going to check and send the results, send the alert. Now here, if you observe, I have not configured the alert email address. Okay, I have not configured the alert email address. So what I would like you to do is configure the alert also. You just have to provide the email address in the script so that you can understand how the script is going to work, whether it is going to send the email or not. That is what I would like you to do that. So here, even if you are not going to do this send alerts, just check that whether CPU utilization, memory utilization and disk utilization is within the limits or exceeding outside of the limits. That is what this particular script talks about. And the next script is about automated log cleanup script. Suppose let's say I have the logs, I have the logs. Let's say the logs are stored for the last 30 days. Now I want to delete the logs which are older than X amount of days. Let's say I want to delete the logs which are older than 30 days. So this X value we can customize according to our requirement. Now, usually the logs will be stored in a directory called slash var slash log. And I'll give the number here. Suppose if the number, if the logs are older than 30 days, then it is going to delete this entire log directory so that a new logs will be created. So if you want to customize this number, you can change. Suppose let's say you want to delete all the logs which are older than seven days. Then you just have to give the number according to your requirement here. And then it is going to perform the logs. 
and by default all the logs will be stored in this path if your logs let's say in your real time scenarios if you have configured the logs in a different location then you just have to give that location here so that automatically the shell script will identify that location and it is going to delete the logs which are older than x number of days that is what the second script is and the third script is about how to take the backup and how to restore the script backup and restoring related script so here what it will do it will do is it is going to take the backup of important directories now how do you know whether it is an important directory or not we have to configure that directory so which backup which directory you want to take it as a backup and where you want to store it that is a backup directory and a source directory okay backup directory and source directory so here you have to customize the directories and then it is going to print all these details it is going to print all these details and here what will happen is it is going to take the backup as a tar file as a tar file so if you want to extract the tar file you can also give that extraction command which i have given it here which i have given it here so it is going to backup all the files as a, a tar file and if you want to extract the tar file here i have also given you the command to extract the tar file as well to extract the tar file as well so this is how it is going to work in this way and the next script is about kubernetes pod health check script so if you want to check the pod health of the kubernetes or kubernetes pods then this script is going to be helpful for you so this is the script i know that you can understand this particular script it is very simple script where you should have a basic idea about how kubernetes will work so if you have an idea about how kubernetes is going to work this particular script is quite easy to understand so here what we have done is namespace i am taking it as a default namespace in kubernetes we have the default namespace and we can create our own namespace also by default this script what it does is it will check the pods or it will health check the pods which are available in the default namespace suppose if you have a custom namespace you just have to give the custom namespace and accordingly the script will run and it is going to give us the output whether the health check of the pod is good or not it is going to tell you that so that is about kubernetes pod health check script and the next one is aws s3 bucket sync so we have an option in s3 service where you can sync the buckets let's say i have the logs that are getting stored from one bucket to another bucket so i want to sync the bucket so that i will get the real time scripts or the real time backups that are available in the directory or in the bucket so that is what this particular script so here you have to provide your own bucket name and whatever you want to have the backup you can give the backup but this is the default path which i am currently giving if you have your own path you can give that path so that the source directory will be taken as that path and make sure the bucket name must be given which is available in your local in your s3 service and then it is going to sync the bucket directory and then it is going to tell that whether sync is completed or not okay that is what this particular script talk about and the next script is about to check if a service is running or not suppose let's say we have different services like apache tomcat nginx like this we have different services so this particular script will check about whether a particular script called nginx service is in the running state or not suppose if you have a different script let's say you have httpd service you just have to give the name of the service here and then it is going to check whether the service is in the running state or it is not in the running state if it is not in the running state what it will do is it will automatically restart that service okay it will automatically restart the service so here you just have to give the service name which is available in your server accordingly this script will be executed currently i have given the script i have given the service as nginx if you have different services you just have to give that service name so that accordingly the script will be executed and you will be getting to know whether the script is in the running state or whether is the script is not in the running state and then it is going to restart the service also restart the service also and the next script is about finding the large files five large files in a specific location in a specific location so it is going to check for the top five largest files which has the large size that it is going to check and it is going to check in the default path which is 
slash dev slash null. So if you have the different path, you can customize that path also. And then the next script is about how many SSH sessions are in the active state. That is what this particular script is. And the disk space, accordingly, it will be going to send you the alert as well. And again, alert related thing I have not configured here. So it is according to your requirement, whether if you want alert, you can configure the alert here in the script. If you don't want, you can directly check the disk utilization. Okay, disk utilization. And here, threshold is completely up to your requirement. If you want to get the threshold, you can give the threshold value according to your requirement. In this script, I have given the threshold as 80%. So you are going to check the alerts if it is greater than 80%. 80%. And then this script is about creating the users, creating the users with the required passwords, with required passwords. Okay. And this script is about finding all the Docker containers which are there in the running state which are there in the running state. So that is about this particular thing. And it is going to give the data in the tabular format, in the tabular format, Docker container ID and using which image it got created and what is the status. So it is going to display the everything in tabular format. And the next one is about deleting the old Docker images, deleting the old Docker images. So the images, whichever are not used. So those images, it is going to get deleted. And the next one is about finding all the Docker containers. Oh, I think it got repeated here. So the 11th one and 13th one, they both are same. So I'll try to change this one when I'm uploading in the GitHub repository. And the next one is Kubernetes node status. So if you want to check the status of the nodes, whether they are in the ready state, whether they are in any other different states, it is going to check that one. It is going to check that one. And then if you want to trigger a Jenkins job using CLI, this is the script that can be used to trigger a Jenkins job using command line interface, especially by using shell script. And make sure here you have to configure the correct Jenkins URL, which is currently running. And you also have to give the job name as well, job name as well, which job you want to trigger that job name you have to give. And you have also, you have to provide the Jenkins user credentials and also the API token as well. Okay, API token as well. Once you provide all these details, Jenkins is going to trigger the job once you execute this shell script. Okay. And then it is going to check the next state is it is going to check whether the job is successful, whether the job is failed or whether the job is unstable. So I hope you all have an idea about the Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible and all those things. So I'm assuming that you know all those things. And that's why I have directly given you the scripts according to the tool that we are going to use in the thing in the devops and then the next one is to restart all the parts in a particular namespace that is again one more thing and the next one is to monitor the kubernetes pod status whether the pods are in the running state or not that is also something that you are going to check and the next one is system uptime so since how long the system has been in the running state so that is also something which you can execute by using this one and if you want to check the disk space usage, you can also check in this way as well. Memory usage, I have also given a different way. So disk space and memory usage, I have already given previously, but I'm using the commands in a different way. So that is what I would like to let you know. So we can write the shell script for the same utilization or for the same requirement, you can write the shell scripts in different ways. So I just wanted to, to show you how you can write the requirement in different ways. The requirement is same, but writing the scripts in a different way that also we need to understand. So that is also something that I have given and taking the backup directory. So that also something which I have given it in a different way. So these are something which are commonly used in the real time scenario. So I have just given you the different scenarios and the scripts which are required in order to understand the execution status that also I have given. So this particular thing will talk about the user creation with the required permission. Let's say in Linux, if you want to create a user, it is going to ask you, it is going to ask you to enter the username and then it is going to ask you what kind of permissions you want to give for user, what kind of permissions you want to give for the group and what kind of permissions you want to give it for others. So we have, we know the file permissions or the directory permissions, which is RWX, read, write, execute read, write, execute. So you just have to give according to your requirement. And then this particular script will create a shell file, will create a user 
and then it will going to allot the required permissions whatever you have given it here so i have given the examples also you just have to give if you want to give the read permission you just have to give r if you want to give write permission you just have to give w if you want to give x executable permission then you just have to give x if you want to give all permissions you just have to give r w x and for each category i have given the permissions here so example permissions also i have given you can change these things according to your requirement and the next script is about listing all the aws ec2 instances with their public ip addresses with their public ip addresses that is all about this particular thing and the last script is about how to take the backup of docker containers and also the docker images as well docker containers and docker images so here what it will do is it will take the backup as a tar file and then it is going to be helpful for us when you whenever you need the backup of the containers and backup of the images this particular script will be very much helpful so these are the different 25 different scripts which are commonly used in the real time scenarios by the devops engineers on a daily basis again there is no rule that only these 25 scripts are used i have just discussed about the most commonly used scripts by the devops engineers in the real time scenarios whatever the scripts that i have given it here you can write the same scripts in different ways also so it is all about how you can write the scripts whether the output is in the desired format or not so that is all about the understanding of different scripts that are commonly used by the devops engineers in real time scenarios so we have seen the 25 most commonly used scripts by the devops engineers in the real time scenarios i want you to execute all of those scripts and check whether the scripts are executing properly or not if the scripts are not executing properly make sure to give appropriate permissions to execute the scripts and to change the conditions that are available in the scripts so if you get any kind of questions feel free to comment in the comment box i'll be responding to your comments with the, the appropriate answers before closing this particular lecture series called shell scripting for devops engineers i hope that you have understood the concepts that are available in the shell scripting for devops engineers and i think this particular lecture series has been very much helpful for you in understanding the various aspects of shell scripting for devops engineers as a last part of this video i would like to request you all to provide your feedback in a linkedin post about this particular lecture series how this particular lecture series is helpful for you whether you have utilized the resources on a large scale or not and how far this particular scripts are generally used in the real time scenarios that also you can share it as your feedback which will help me to create more and more lecture series on different devops tools that are available and please make sure to tag me on the linkedin post that also boost me to create more and more lecture series and i'll also get to know your feedback on this lecture series as well thank you all once again you have encouraged this particular lecture series on a large scale and i wish you all the best for your devops engineer career as well thank you all see you in the next videos which will be on different lecture series and also on the devops projects as well thank you all